You're a defective and fertile woman. Susan sneered, holding her baby and smirking at me. Her eyes were clearly filled with disdain. Then Alex spoke, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. We're getting divorced, so I can remarry Susan. What am I going to do with these two? My mom was staring at Susan and Alex in disbelief. Hey, enough already. Just as I was about to speak up, overwhelmed with irritation, my mom tilted her head and said, Oh, that baby. I'm Mary, 30 years old. I live with my husband, Alex, who is the same age as me. Alex and I were classmates in middle school, and we developed a romantic relationship after reconnecting at a class reunion. Alex works for a mid-sized company and often has the opportunity to work from home. I also work remotely, so we sometimes work together in the same room. People around us think we are a close couple. We've been married for three years, but we don't have any children yet. However, I'm not in a hurry to have kids. Alex is one of three siblings with two older brothers, both of whom are married with lots of kids. Because of that, his parents don't pressure us for another grandchild. I have an older sister, Susan, but she's still single and doesn't have a boyfriend. My mom believes that having children is a blessing, so she isn't obsessed with having grandchildren. When I think about it, I realize how fortunate I am. My dad passed away from an illness when I was young, and my mom has supported us as a fortune teller ever since. She works at a fortune telling shop near the downtown area, and she's apparently somewhat popular. Every now and then, she offers to read my fortune, but I always turn her down. I've been keeping my distance from Susan for certain reasons, but she still lives with my mom. That's why I haven't wanted to return to their apartment. Even without a fortune reading, I'm happy now because I have Alex. If we have kids someday, I'll be even happier. I was thinking positively, but my happy days came to an abrupt end. It all started with a call from my mom. Oh, no, there's a water leak in your apartment? Yes. My mom replied, her voice sounding unusually gloomy. Their apartment is an old rental on the first floor, over 30 years old. This time, there was a water leak from the floor above, and their place got flooded. Because of the damage and the building's age, they've decided to tear down the whole place. What are you and Susan going to do? Suddenly, losing their home would be tough. And Susan doesn't have a job, so my mom has been supporting her living expenses, too. I'm sure my mom hasn't been able to save much either. Then, with a hint of apology in her voice, my mom said, I'm sorry, Mary, but could you look after Susan for a while? I can stay at my workplace, but they won't let Susan stay there with me. She had asked her employer, but they didn't allow Susan to stay with her. I've tried to avoid dealing with Susan, but in an emergency like this, I couldn't refuse. Besides, I didn't want to trouble my mom any further. Okay. And so, I reluctantly agreed to take Susan into my home. The place I live in with Alex is a three-bedroom condo. Luckily, the room we had planned to use as a nursery is still available. Mary, thanks for having me. The next day, Susan arrived with a large suitcase. But when I saw her, I froze in shock. Is your belly really big? Susan is usually slim, so her belly stood out even more. She smiled like a child caught doing something mischievous. You figured it out. Yeah, I'm eight months pregnant. I was stunned when I heard that. You're almost due. You said you were single. Who's the father? 
I pressed her for answers. I thought she should be living with the baby's father. But instead of answering me, Susan turned to Alex, who was standing next to me. Alex, you're still as handsome as ever. You're way too good for Mary. With her hand on her cheek, Susan gazed at Alex dreamily. Susan's way prettier than Mary. It's hard to believe they're sisters. Alex clearly flattered, smiled, and flirted with her. It bothered me how familiar they were with each other. Later, I called my mom and asked her about it. She sighed deeply. I've asked her about the father many times, but for some reason, she won't tell me. I see. According to my mom, Susan's pregnancy was also a reason why they couldn't let her stay at her workplace. When the baby is born, we should learn more. Just hang in there for a little while longer, okay? What does she mean, we'll learn more when the baby's born? I hung up the phone, feeling uneasy. This chaotic situation right from day one of living together left me at a loss. Susan's behavior only got worse from that point on. As her belly grew, she started treating me like her maid. Mary, could you buy me pizza from that shop near the station? The baby inside me is craving it. She rubbed her belly as she said it, and I couldn't help but push back. Again, you've been eating takeout almost every day, and I keep telling you that shop is expensive. Ever since Susan came here, she's been constantly asking for different foods and making me go out to buy them for her. However, since she doesn't have any money, she never pays for it. She'd just take the food like it was nothing. On top of that, she didn't do any housework, and my workload only kept increasing. When I argued back, Susan's eyes filled with tears. Uh, Mary, that's so mean. I'm just trying to eat nutritious food for the baby. Maybe you don't understand because you've never been pregnant. Susan screamed hysterically, pretending to cry. As I struggled to respond, Alex chimed in. Are you being mean to Susan again, Mary? Just go get her the pizza. This is an important time for her. He sighed at me in frustration. Susan quickly ran over to Alex. Alex, Mary is so awful to me. I bet she's not even supporting my pregnancy. She clung to Alex. Hey, Susan, you're way too close to him. I instinctively warned her. Alex is my husband, not hers. But she didn't seem to care at all. Alex is your husband, so he's family to me too, right? Family doesn't need personal space. Alex wasn't much better. Mary, you're being too uptight. Susan is your important family, right? Plus, she's pregnant. You should be nicer to her. Oh, Alex. Susan gazed at him, clearly moved. I watched the two of them with cold eyes. The reason I've been avoiding Susan in the first place is because of her bad habits with men. She has stolen guys I like multiple times. The breaking point in our relationship happened five years ago. Before I met Alex, I was planning to marry someone, but she took him from me. Susan may look beautiful, and men are easily fooled by that. Although I eventually met Alex and got married, I still can't forgive Susan for what she did. By the way, after she took my boyfriend, she broke up with him almost immediately. She probably wasn't even that into him. This incident is why I've kept my distance from her ever since. Now I'm certain the father of the baby she's carrying is also some no good guy. If he were a decent man, he'd be living with Susan and helping her with the baby. I wonder how Susan plans to support herself after the baby is born. I couldn't help but worry about the future. 
On the day of Susan's delivery, the hospital's policy allowed only one person to be present, so our mom went with her. For some reason, both Susan and Alex seemed disappointed, but I chose to ignore it. About five hours later, while Alex and I were waiting at home, my phone rang. It was my mom. As soon as I picked up, she excitedly announced, Susan's baby is here. It seems the birth went smoothly, and both Susan and the baby were doing well. After I hung up with my mom, I told Alex. The baby was born safely. Both Susan and baby are healthy. Alex let out a sigh of relief and muttered. That's great. I'm so glad. Alex, who can be so concerned about his sister-in-law, really has a kind heart. Seeing him genuinely relieved made me realize that. Alex and I headed to the hospital to see Susan. When we entered the room, there was my mom and Susan lying in bed. Next to her was her newborn baby. Susan. Alex rushed straight to Susan and the baby. What? Oh, well, I'm so glad the baby was born safely. Susan, thank you. Tears of joy streamed down Alex's face as he thanked her. Susan nodded responding to his emotion. I'm really glad everything went well. Even I started feeling something was off about the whole scene. What is going on here? I have a really bad feeling about this. And in the next moment, my suspicion was confirmed. This baby is mine and Alex's. Since you can't have kids, I gave birth to it for you. You should be grateful, you defective and fertile woman. Susan sneered, holding the baby and smirking at me. What? I stood there, mouth open, staring at Susan in shock. Her eyes were clearly filled with disdain. Then Alex spoke, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. We're getting divorced, so I can remarry Susan. So... I was deceived by both of you this whole time. I muttered quietly to myself. I had gone out of my way to take care of pregnant Susan, only to be met with the worst kind of betrayal. But Susan showed no sign of regret. Deceived? You're so naive. It's your fault for not being suspicious. And I did you a favor by giving you Alex's child. You should be thanking me. Susan grinned as she delivered her cruel words. It's your fault for never getting pregnant, Mary. My brothers all have kids, and I was starting to feel embarrassed. Alex acted like I was the one to blame. There wasn't a trace of remorse in him either. These two were beyond hope. They had done the worst thing a person could do. Then, I asked Susan something that had been bothering me. Pregnancy takes about 10 months, right? So, how long have you been cheating with Alex? When Susan first moved in with us, her belly was already big. So, the affair must have started a while ago. As I wondered about it, I got an unbelievable answer. About three years ago? We exchanged numbers in the waiting room during your wedding. What? I frowned at Susan, who was answering happily. Yeah, Mary, your makeup took forever. I spent the whole time talking to Susan, and we just clicked. Alex grinned as he recalled their interactions during our wedding. It was the moment I realized they had been cheating since the beginning of our marriage. I could feel my face turning red with anger. What am I going to do with these two? Wait, Alex is the father of Susan's baby? But he's married to Mary. What's going on? My mom was staring at Susan and Alex in disbelief. Ignoring her, Susan turned to Alex and said, We should have a wedding of our own soon. Wouldn't it be fun to do it abroad? 
Mary can watch the baby while we're gone. Alex's face lit up at the idea. Mary can't have kids, so she'd probably be thrilled to take care of ours. She might even cry with joy. Alex's unnecessary comment left me feeling disgusted. At the same time, my irritation kept building. There was just no consideration for my feelings at all. Then it's settled. We'll have a lavish wedding overseas, and Mary will be the babysitter while we're away. While I stood there shaking with anger, Susan and Alex selfishly made their plans. My mom, meanwhile, ignored them and kept looking at the baby with a puzzled expression. Hey, enough already. Just as I was about to speak up, overwhelmed with irritation, my mom tilted her head and said, Oh, that baby. What about the baby? Susan tilted her head, trying to act innocent. But my mom didn't answer her and kept staring at the baby. After about a minute, she let out a slow sigh. Susan, lying is wrong. This baby isn't Alex's, is it? What are you talking about? Alex froze, stunned by my mom's unexpected words. The next moment, Susan rushed in, clearly flustered. Oh, come on, Mom. What are you saying all of a sudden? Of course, this baby is Alex's. Look, the eyes are just like his. Susan pointed to the baby, but it was obvious the eyes didn't resemble Alex's at all. Alex has double eyelids, but the baby's eyes were single-lidded. And since Susan also has wide, double-lidded eyes, the baby didn't look like her either. Do you know why I've been able to make a living as a fortune teller? What? No, I don't. Susan was clearly rattled when my mom gave her a serious look. I'm pretty spiritually sensitive. That's why I'm good at fortune telling. When I look at a person, I can sense their background. Really? I had no idea my mom had spiritual abilities. She turned to me, smiling sheepishly. I didn't want to scare you, so I kept it quiet until now. But with Susan acting like this, I thought it was time to tell you. It's true that since I'm scared of ghosts, talk about spiritual abilities would definitely freak me out. My mom seemed to understand that, which is why she kept it a secret from me. It would have been nice to know earlier. Did you have to say it now? Susan yelled, but my mom completely ignored her. Then Alex stared closely at the baby's eyes and suddenly realized something. Wait a second. This baby looks like that guy. That guy? I immediately asked Alex. He mumbled in a low voice. Susan was also seeing the security guard at this hospital. I guess she had a moment of weakness. The baby's eyes look just like his. What do you mean? Shock, I instinctively asked Alex again. Actually, Susan has been coming to this hospital for cancer screenings every two years. The reason is that this hospital is the designated facility for Susan's cancer screenings. Last summer, when she came here, the heat made her feel unwell, and that's when the security guard helped her. It seems they became romantically involved after that. I found out about the affair right away and told her to break it off. But to think she got pregnant from that. Alex said, clearly confused. He's having an affair with Susan while married to me. So what right does he have to say anything? My mom seemed to have the same thought as me and muttered under her breath, just loud enough that Alex couldn't hear. Take a look at your own actions first. But Alex, completely ignoring our cold stares, glared angrily at Susan. Hey, why did you lie and say the baby was mine? 
I was about to divorce Mary because of this. Alex kept yelling at Susan, endlessly berating her. Then, with a tearful face, she said, But he's married and has five kids. There's no way he'd divorce for me. You had an affair with a man who has five kids? That's just unbelievable. I couldn't help but let my thoughts slip out. To get pregnant by a man who's a father to a large family, Susan is unbelievably reckless. Besides, he's already 50 years old. By the time this baby grows up, he'll be 70. Isn't it unfair to this child to have such an old dad? Then, in an attempt to gain sympathy, Susan showed off the baby. She was crying as if she were some kind of tragic heroine, but I couldn't feel any sympathy for her at all. After all, she selfishly had an affair with a 50-year-old man, and now she's dragging my husband, Alex, into her mess because the other guy won't raise the baby with her. There's no way I could forgive that. I don't care about unfair. Alex shouted, looking hurt. But I didn't think Alex had any right to feel hurt. After all, he also cheated with Susan, so I was the one who had been hurt the most. Then, Alex turned to Susan and said, Look, the baby isn't mine, so this has nothing to do with me. I'm not divorcing Mary. What? After I went through all this to have a baby, you're going to leave this child without a dad? You're the worst, Alex. Susan's angry outburst was met with a heavy sigh from Alex, who responded in an exasperated tone. If you want the baby to have a father, go to that security guy. I don't care what you say. I'm done. Then, seemingly uninterested in Susan or the baby anymore, Alex turned to me with a casual grin. Mary, I'm tired. Let's head home. I'm craving steak for dinner. What are you talking about? Traitor! How dare you, you infertile woman? As I stood there in shock at Alex's ridiculous suggestion, Susan lashed out at me. These two are truly the worst people I've ever known. I sighed heavily and turned to Alex. No way. Alex smiled at me, seemingly misunderstanding. Oh, so you don't want steak. What do you feel like then? We can even go out tonight if you want. Listen. Oh, but if we go out, you're paying, okay? I'm broke. With that, Alex started heading for the door. It was clear that Alex just wanted to leave as quickly as possible. But I wasn't about to let him get away that easily. My mom finally spoke, breaking the silence. Alex, we're not done talking. With that, my mom glared at Alex. But Alex responded in a mocking tone. Hey, your face looks a little scary right now. You've got such a pretty face. Don't ruin it by getting so mad. Meanwhile, Susan, still in shock from being rejected by Alex, mumbled to herself. I don't have an income and I was planning to become Alex's wife. Now it's all ruined. She was biting her nails nervously. My mom looked at her with utter disgust. Susan, do you really hate the idea of working that much? I must have raised you wrong. I hate working. I want to live as a housewife and have fun. Susan replied firmly. At this point, her honesty was almost refreshing in its shamelessness. Then my mom turned to Alex and asked, Alex, you've heard both of my daughters. How do you plan to take responsibility? Even if Susan brought it on herself, I'm the one who was betrayed. Alex needed to take some kind of responsibility. But Alex just smiled casually and answered, I'm not taking any responsibility. Why should I? 
The baby isn't even mine. You're not seriously expecting me to marry Susan when I'm not the real father, are you? Unbelievable. His self-centered attitude made my anger flare up. But before I could say anything, my mom spoke up for me. And what about Mary? You cheated on her with Susan, didn't you? You owe her something for that. My mom's voice shook with rage. Clearly, she couldn't forgive him for what he'd done. But Alex didn't seem to care. Mary will forgive me. And since everything's back to normal, I don't owe anyone anything, right? It's like it never happened. What? My mom was stunned by Alex's outrageous reasoning. He ignored her and turned to me instead. Mary, let's get out of this gloomy place. Let's go grab dinner on you, of course. He smiled as if nothing had happened. I was disgusted by his suggestion, but also by the fact that he hadn't reflected on his actions at all despite causing so much chaos. I looked at Alex and flatly rejected him. I'm not going home with you, Alex. Are you still mad about me cheating with Susan? It turns out the baby isn't mine, so this is good news for you. Now we can just go back to living like nothing happened. I'm over your indifferent attitude, Alex. You were the one who suggested we get divorced in the first place, right? Let's go ahead and end this marriage. I don't need Alex in my life anymore. He betrayed me so easily, and now that he knows the baby isn't his, he's ready to throw Susan aside. He's the worst kind of man. Hearing my rejection, Alex's eyebrows shot up. What? Divorce? Don't be selfish. I don't have any money right now, and I can't move out of the condo. That means we have to live together. Alex yelled trying to intimidate me. He was as selfish as ever. Why don't you have any money, Alex? You've got a job, so you should have at least some savings, right? Alex works a regular job. He's my age, so he should be earning a decent income. But he shouted back at me. Because I had to pay for Susan's hospital visits and her stay here, I'm broke. Why would you do that? The fact that Susan made Alex, who isn't even the father, pay for everything is unbelievable. I looked over at Susan, who seemed embarrassed that it had been exposed. Well, I don't have a job, and I'm broke. Susan, you need to get a job. You're a mother now. Normally, people work hard for their baby's sake. Even my mom was fed up. Then, Alex suddenly had an idea. That's right. Susan, you owe me for all the hospital bills. Since it's not my kid, you should pay me back every cent. Alex held out his hand to Susan, clearly expecting her to give him money. But Susan snapped back to life and argued. What? There's no way I have money. I've been unemployed all this time, and I'm not giving back a single penny. What do you mean? Alex and Susan started bickering over money. We were in a hospital, and the baby had already started crying from the noise. With this commotion, it wouldn't be long before the nurses came to check on us. I had already made up my mind to divorce Alex, and I didn't want to see their faces anymore. I turned to my mom. Let's go. She nodded, looking just as exhausted. Those two would end up in a bad place eventually. Besides, in their current state, there was no way Susan and Alex could get married. I quietly smirked at the thought of their inevitable breakup. While they continued arguing, my mom and I left the hospital room. Not long after that, I divorced Alex. 
While Alex and Susan were busy arguing in the hospital room, I took advantage of the situation, went back to the condo, and packed up my valuables. And then, I left the condo for good. Up until now, we were both contributing, so paying the rent wasn't an issue. I'm sure Alex will hit a wall soon enough on his own. After leaving the condo, I checked into a business hotel. By then, Alex had already called me several times, but I ignored him and headed straight to a lawyer's office. The lawyer assigned to me was a woman, and she was incredibly supportive. We're going to make sure you get a happy alimony. Men like him are the enemy of all women. Her strong words gave me a sense of relief. At the same time, I hired a private investigator to gather solid evidence of Alex and Susan's affair. Through the investigation, I also found out the name of Susan's other lover, the security guard. I even saw a picture of him, a middle-aged man with single-lidded eyes. Susan truly had no standards, I thought to myself again. Once everything was in place, I summoned Alex to the lawyer's office. There, in the presence of my lawyer, I demanded both a divorce and compensation. At first, Alex tried to dodge the issue, but the lawyer firmly shut him down. Mary has absolutely no attachment to you anymore. Let her go already. She'll be much happier without you. That final remark seemed to hit home. He must have realized how serious I was. Alex, who had been acting so confident up until then, suddenly broke down in tears, clinging to me. Please, don't ask for a divorce. I'm behind on rent, and without you, I won't be able to make ends meet. In the end, it was all about money. I had been the reason Alex could live comfortably. Since we split the household expenses, now that he was alone, his financial situation was bound to be tight. But I shut down his plea without hesitation. Maybe you'd be happy if I stayed, but I'd be miserable. Let's get this divorce over with. No, please, Mary. Alex was sobbing loudly, even though we were at a lawyer's office. It was pathetic to see him like that. I decided to hit him with a hard truth. By the way, I got tested for infertility at the gynecologist. Really? Alex looked at me dumbfounded. He clearly didn't understand the point of what I was saying. I smiled and delivered the punchline. There was nothing wrong with me. Maybe the reason I couldn't get pregnant was because of you, Alex. No, that can't be. I want kids. I gave Alex my final words as he stood there visibly shaken. Let's hope you're not defective, Alex. These were the same words Susan had once thrown at me. Alex looked completely defeated by what I said, hanging his head in shock. It must have hit him hard because after that, he quietly signed the divorce papers and the alimony agreement without protest, just as the lawyer instructed. As far as I was concerned, once I had his signature, Alex didn't matter anymore. With the signed papers in hand, I immediately left the lawyer's office. I had held on to resentment for the way Alex had acted back in the hospital. Those final words I said would likely leave him with a lifelong trauma. He had wanted children so badly, which made it even worse for him. Alex could spend the rest of his life reflecting on his mistakes and fearing whether he'd ever be able to have kids of his own. In the end, Alex paid the alimony in a lump sum. He apparently begged his parents for help, and they covered the payment for him. This was because Alex had quit his job and had no income. After our divorce, rumors about Alex started circulating at his workplace. Then again, he had been telling everyone he was going to have a child, so it was a result of his own actions. 
Unable to handle the situation, he ended up moving back in with his parents. That said, he'll still have to pay his parents back. He'll need to find a job, and there's no telling when his morally upright parents might give up on him. Alex's tough days are far from over. Serves him right. As for Susan, things have gotten even worse for her. After everything that happened, she was completely cut off by both me and my mom. To make matters worse, I've also filed a claim for alimony against her through my lawyer. As if that wasn't already hard enough for Susan, things took an even worse turn for her. The wife of Susan's affair partner, who is the real father of the baby, found out about the affair. I sent a copy of the investigator's report to the hospital where Susan gave birth. That seems to have triggered a major scandal. Her affair partner, the security guard, was fired. Having an affair with a patient was unheard of at the hospital. When he lost his job, his wife found out about the affair. Now, his furious wife is demanding alimony from Susan. According to the private investigator's report, the security guard's wife is a top, no-nonsense woman. It's likely that her husband won't get off easy either. As things stand, Susan has put her baby at an orphanage and is now working. She never seemed that interested in the baby anyway. To her, the baby was just a tool to secure her marriage. I'm utterly disgusted by her. Of course, she's finally facing her punishment. Not only am I demanding alimony, but so is her lover's former wife. Even though the amounts are standard, having to pay both of us means the total is a hefty sum. For someone like Susan, who's unemployed, it's a heavy blow. Since she's cut ties with both me and our mom, she doesn't even have a place to live. Out of desperation, she's taken a live-in job. According to my lawyer, it's a brutally tough workplace, the kind of place even men would run from. For someone like Susan, who never wanted to work, this must be an especially harsh reality. And honestly, I couldn't be happier about it. Five years have passed since then. A lot has changed in my life. The biggest changes are that I've remarried and had a child. I used to think I wouldn't remarry for a long time, but I ended up hitting it off with someone through work and got married again. Unlike Alex, my new husband only has eyes for me and I feel secure with him. He would never betray me. Soon after we married, I was blessed with a baby. Having my own child is such a joy and I'm so glad I experienced motherhood. My current husband loves kids too and dotes on our little one. My mom is doing well too and she's rented a small apartment near her workplace. It's a small place, but perfect for her living alone. My fortune telling skills are unbeatable. I'll keep working forever. My mom said that with a fist pump, showing her resilient spirit as always. Now, I found a new kind of happiness. Still, I don't know what the future holds. There may come a time when I want to rely on fortune telling again. But with my wonderful family by my side, I'm sure everything will be okay. I believe in myself and will keep moving forward today and every day.